Hello there and Happy New Year! I finally have for you the Q&A video that I announced over a month ago now and I finally got a chance to sit down, or at least I hope it will be the case because my wonderful, wonderful husband took the children outside and I have one hour to record it so I really need to get to the point, let's say. First of all, thank you so much for all the questions. I have to admit I was quite shocked to get any questions because I was very shy announcing it and I thought, okay, I probably will have like three questions but I kind of needed this Q&A video because I knew I would not have time to record a proper recipe because of the Christmas and New Year's Eve and I didn't even know that there will be a new lockdown in Germany. So now the children since, what, like three weeks are at home with me. So I have basically zero time for recording. So thank God I, I thought of this uh, Q&A video and thank God that you asked me some questions. Thank you very much. I actually myself never ask any questions to other YouTubers, even my favorite ones. I have some favorite YouTubers that I follow always. Always watch the, the, the Q&A videos, but I never thought about asking a question. So I thought, okay, the chances that in such a small community there will be some people thinking, oh, I'll ask a question, will be very, very low. But yeah, I'm very happy I did because the questions, I mean, you will see, some of them are very, very interesting and I'm so happy to be able to answer them. Okay, so as I said, I have only one hour. I have my coffee here, just in case, because it's still early morning and it's so dark outside. I hope you can see something. I'll, I will need to do some uh, post-editing, I guess, to put some brightness in the in this shoot because it's you probably the only darkness that you can see. I also uh, got all the questions from you, so I start with the questions that might be the most interesting for most of the viewers, which is meal planning and recipe organization. I guess these are the kind of questions that everybody uh, from my viewers from this channel might be a little bit interested in. Then goes to a little more niche kind of questions which are about food photography. And for those that will be the most resistant hairstyle until the end, I will have a couple of personal questions, but nothing like too crazy. So first question that I chose to start with is where do you find easy but healthy recipes? Many of the online ones are super complicated with many ingredients and steps. So I wrote myself some keywords so I don't forget to speak about anything and I start with the most obvious one which are cookbooks and no I do not uh, like follow very step, to step by step the uh, recipes in cookbooks but I have a kind of a, it's kind of a hobby I guess wherever I am even if it's like a cookbook in a language I don't understand I just love to go through them I love to look at the pictures if I understand what they say I always read more as the ingredients the method I try to understand it it's not to directly do the recipe but it somehow sticks in my head and then in the kitchen it just comes handy when I try to create something new or just something quick. Next point are the YouTube channel. I have a number of my favorite YouTubers and I get lots of inspiration for cooking there. So I will actually link for you, I thought, um, below this video. I don't want to go now through all my favorite YouTube channels because we don't have time for that. But I will link for you in the description box below, which I know it's a bit difficult to find right now because YouTube changed some stuff. You need to really and, and reveal the, the description box. I hope you get to find it. If not, just contact me and I'll try to, you know, take you by hand and show you where it is. But there I will put the, um, some of my favorite YouTube channels from where I take uh, inspiration for, for meals, for family meals, so that you can also check it out and maybe also, you know, follow them and yeah, fall in love as I did with them. And next point, yeah, this is probably my favorite. So it's experimenting in the kitchen. So my my profession is I'm, I'm a scientist. I hold my life for like the last over 10 years. I was working in the lab doing experiments and I always saw cooking kind of similar to that. It's a, it's an experiment in a way. I mean, even if you follow a, a recipe, it is kind of following a protocol of an experiment. So you need to be very precise or you have to kind of be creative and try to think of a ways to create something new. And now since uh, three years already, yeah, three years, I am a mom of now two children. So I have like very, very few time, additionally with the YouTube channel, some other hobbies, I'm a bit like an active person, let's say. And so the, I really love creating meals for my family. I think it's very important, like not for everyone, but for me personally, that's the way I'm like, you know, reuniting family every day over the table that's my thing but definitely our meals are not crazy fancy that that's for sure very often we have like potatoes and and mushroom sauce or like those very simple things but like a kind of whole and you know comforting and so this is kind of my, my way of cooking 
and it happens very often that I just open the fridge, I see what is inside, I put it together and it comes like, like a crazy delicious meal sometimes. And I have to admit that of course this, this kind of experiment it's normal that sometimes you fail. It's just sometimes it doesn't taste as it should, sometimes I use a wrong cooking technique and it's overcooked or it's not, not just right, I used you know the deliciousness of some vegetables, it happened. It happened and I think it's part of life. We should not be ashamed of it and just, you know, try to get new experience. And also, I, I noticed that with time, I definitely could get better and better at this freestyling in the, in the kitchen. And there is one of the books that recently I read. It's called Salt, Fat, Acid, Heat by Samin Nosrat. Actually, let me just get, I forgot to get this book. Let me just quickly get this book for you. Resharpen everything. So that's the book. I already mentioned it to you probably a few times on this channel. It's amazing. It's quite thick, but only half of it, it's uh, more or less half of it, it's, um, it's recipes actually. And the other half, she takes you through. So her theory is that just very quickly, I don't want to now do a revision of a book, but so she claims that uh, to make a delicious meal, all you need to master are four elements, the saltiness, the, the fat that you use, not forget about the acidity of the meal and use proper, way of cooking it so that's the heat and I have to admit I mean this book kind of uh, brought together all the knowledge that I kind of already had through the years of cooking I mean you you learn some things just by experiencing but also added some elements that I was missing so now I kind of feel that I have finally I kind of co completed the knowledge now I understand the cooking but yeah probably not completely but I have admit have to admit that since I read this book yeah, my cooking definitely improved. So for example, just like a crazy example, the mushroom sauce. I would have never thought about putting acidity in the mushroom sauce before. For me, mushroom sauce, it was just spices, mushrooms, cream, and that was it. But now I add either, either lemon juice or white wine or both. And that just uh, changed this meal into something very whole and absolutely delicious. Sometimes you even don't, don't taste this acidity. You would not guess there is lemon inside, a soup or something but somehow it makes it some yeah whole and delicious so yeah i would definitely advise you i will link for you this book below so you can check it out i'm sure there are many other books if you know some let me know below i would definitely be very curious to to check it out but yeah definitely coming up with new ideas um, it helps to experiment in the kitchen and not being afraid of of the failure and the last point on that very very long <laughs> question that my, my answer is very long question was was just perfect <laughs> So discussing about uh, about cooking, about food. So I was very lucky in a way because uh, I always, I mean, since, not always, but since uh, all my adult life, so whatever, I was 20 when I moved to Paris and I always lived in a big city where it was very international. So I had lots of friends or roommates even that were co coming from a completely different uh, culture. So for the day, simple cooking was something completely new for me. So I always um, tend to ask questions, try to understand, uh, see how do they put things together so that also opened my eyes so much um, for for the cooking now since I have a YouTube channel um, I also have like a Facebook group as a closed Facebook group a local in Germany but there are also so many people it's uh, so international and I absolutely they, I love to read the, the, the recipes that they share those are just uh, simple short uh, family recipes nothing fancy but for me sometimes like wow I would never think of something like this the other day I was speaking with my sister-in-law and she said, oh, but this, I, because I asked her what she's cooking now since she became a student, so she lives by herself first time in her life. So I was curious, what is she preparing for, for her meals? And she said, no, but it's like so simple. It's just some goat cheese with some vegetables. I was thinking, yeah, it's brilliant. I mean, it's really brilliant for someone who never did it. It's so extremely simple. It's a completely meal. It's a full, wholesome, and it's absolutely amazing. But without, you know, discussing, you would never, Oh, it will take you much longer. Well, I probably should pass to the next question because that will be... I have only one hour for this video. So the next question is... I'd like to know more about your system of meal planning as you shop ahead. Do you go in your archive binder and pick up a magic set for the following week? So because I we do our shopping online since quite a moment now, you would just order order our grocery shopping online and because of that I was I started to be forced to plan a little bit ahead before I never never did it but it kind of came with my life as, as a student I mean of course you just go after classes you just grab a few things and you just make a meal 
and now having a family is more economic it's uh, it's, it's time consume um, yeah, it, it uh, saves you some time um, so I definitely try to plan the meals ahead but I'm far away from some other really experts in meal planning. You can find lots of on YouTube. I did watch some videos that are almost like kind of mind blown. But what I do, because I'm ordering usually weekly the meals, I try to uh, shop for five, um, five dinners. So I come up with the five dinner ideas that I would like to do this week. And I try to get all the ingredients that I need to make it, plus some like pa pantry uh, staples. Like, I mean, I always have at home uh, eggs, uh, uh, cream, butter, rice, uh, potatoes, what else do I have? Like vegetables and fruits that are frozen, this is also something I have always in my freezer. And already with those like very simple ingredients I can make a breakfast, I can add it to like making a quick dinner in case uh, something doesn't work out. And for lunch we usually have the leftovers or some kind of combination of leftovers and something very simple. Uh, we also grab sometimes extra bread from, from a bakery. So I do not, I feel like I do not really need to plan things that much, but just having those five dinner ideas, which is really not that much work, uh, ordering it or going for the grocery shopping and you're kind of set for a week and it makes it very, very simple. A thing that I shared with you before and that really helped me tremendously and I do it like I really try to do it otherwise it makes life difficult I have a blackboard in the kitchen but it could be just a notebook really and while unpacking my grocery shopping I write down what do I with the day buy it's not why like it's not while planning that I do it but I rather do it from my memory and then while I'm unpacking I say okay I said that I will do whatever the dill sauce with broccoli and I write that this, this is supposed to be eaten and then once we, we did it I erase it from the blackboard like this I have a very quick look in my fridge in a way so I have directly an idea I don't have to think mm, what should I cook because otherwise definitely it's a problem I have million ideas what to cook but if I don't plan it a little bit ahead and if I'm just like sleep deprived with children it's easy or just not motivated or just feeling a little bit blue whatever I, I would have a trouble to come up with something you know nutritious and wholesome to eat and if I just look at the blackboard it's there so it's kind of convenient um, what else here so I hope it answered the question so the binder archive I did start long time ago which you probably don't know about a, a blog at first uh, the YouTube channel I started only this year but long long time ago in 2013 I want to say before I had children and anything I started a blog and there I was kind of using it as my archive for all best recipes so whatever my my boyfriend boyfriend then was um, had like a new recipe that worked out very well because he also likes to cook and he usually goes with the recipe from a book we try we either like it or we don't like it if we like it I always put it there so this blog I mean it's just travelfortaste.com so if you go there you will see that it's not such a good quality place because I mean I didn't have any experience yet, yet but that is my I still use it to to find the recipe if I for example needed like you know short crust pastry or something I always go there because I know that I always use it from there and it worked so that's my kind of um, yeah a kind of a catalog of my recipes but now additionally of course I have a YouTube channel so it, it's definitely my way of uh, storing the recipes but if I did not have anything like this I would probably create like an Excel a sheet or sheets and where you can quickly search so um, the paper it, it, as cool as it looks my mother had always this uh, little uh, notebook and this little yellowish paper and she always wrote, wrote by hand all the recipes and then she could quickly find but I think today for me it would be much more convenient to have something I can just do Control F to find <laughs> or Apple F if you're on a Mac and then just quickly find the recipe or an ingredient or a keyword that is very convenient so if you planning on doing something I guess some kind of even a word document that you can save as a PDF later page by page you can easily change some or add notes and it looks you know like clear and clean okay next question next question is do you set a budget uh, in meal planning so the truth is we do not have a budget we just shop um, without thinking too much about how much we spend but we do you know, keep track of how much we spend for food and for everything really so then in the end of every month I can see how much we spent and then if it gets a little bit too crazy which happens especially if I have a food channel it, it sometimes I get a little bit too too creative and too uh, uh, yeah too, too active with cooking and it, it happened previously that I spent clearly too much money on on our our, our food 
but then this next month I try to be try to be more reasonable and also I do always look at the at the prices it's not that I'm just uh, carelessly buying whatever I always check the prices I, I know how much costs the butter how much costs milk whatever and I try to choose the best uh, good quality for the best price and also buying seasonal I think it's a huge uh, uh, it's, it's a great help if you want to um, shop economically next does your husband contribute to the meal planning so we do have an app that is synchronized in our phones uh, for the grocery shopping so whenever he sees that something is missing he always adds it to the list so in that way yes that he, he's not indifferent about our our grocery shopping but I have to admit that it somehow it's always me who's like in charge of really meal planning cooking and yeah taking care of food in our family but he does like to cook he cooks very well it's just that his uh, style of cooking is more uh, following a recipe often it's a more complex recipe so it just it happens that uh, my style of cooking which is just uh, making something from nothing is more su suited, suited for uh, cooking for a family like this busy week uh, with two children running around I can just very quickly come up with an idea if we didn't plan it and the, t the dinner is on the table whereas he prepare he he needs a little bit more more time or preparation so but I really enjoy it. I really enjoy when he cooks because I can I can have a rest, of course, and I enjoy his cooking very much. But in our home, like the everyday uh, meals, it's it's probably me, I would say. Next question. You cook healthy and delicious meals. What are ingredients, processes of cooking you prefer or try to avoid? I'm still confused when it comes, for example, to sugar and sugar substitutes. Zero sweetness is not an option. Maple syrup, honey, stevia, which one uh, are the least of the devil? So I find it's a, it's a very sensitive subject, especially if you have small children. It's such a um, large spectrum of possibilities that I know that whatever I will say here, there will be at least one person that will say, oh, come on, this is an exaggeration, this is unnecessary. And another person will say, that, that you call that healthy? Are you crazy? So like, just don't take... Um, a, what I say uh, too much like an order what you should do but more I would like to share with you what I try to do to keep my family healthy but it's yeah in the ideal world I think we should be all vegan eating um, wholesome uh, very few processed food that would be ideal but at least I mean me I'm not there yet so what we try to do in our family is to avoid refined sugar so this is why it's uh, granulated sugar we try not to put it anything we have a little bit in the at home for like a yeast dough grow but we put like really tiny tiny traces of it and another thing that i am very opposed to are processed meats so anything like cold cuts sausages simply because if you read the ingredients on it you kind of think okay that what how did they even come up to put those things inside so I am a big fan of reading the labels. I read labels on everything, including like yogurts, because you, you never know what they put inside really. If you buy a plain yogurt, I think here in Germany, you mostly like safe, but they sometimes put like a gum in it. It's really weird, weird ingredients in cream, etc. So I always try to read the, um, the labels and choose my favorite option. And then I just buy always the same, so I don't have to always read the labels. It doesn't take, it doesn't take that long time, but just to choose the best, whatever cheese, whatever, uh, cream, uh, sauces or whatever, like if I buy passata, I don't want anything else than, than tomatoes and maybe salt, nothing else. So I think reading labels, it's a very, very healthy habit. Let me see what I have still on my list because I did my reading labels. I do love frozen vegetables and fruits. Even, even during summer when they are available, I still tend to buy sometimes the frozen ones because I'm sure that they are picked up when they are the most ripe, the most delicious, the more nutritious by that. And yeah, it's, it's a very convenient way not to waste too much food because it's in the, your freezer. But yeah, that's, that's what I like to do. And speaking of uh, things that I avoid, I do not avoid fats, especially like plant, um, uh, plant-based, you say, plant, they're coming from plants, fats. I do not avoid them. We eat plenty of avocado, plenty of oil, probably a little bit too much, but 
we feel healthy so I guess it's not too bad what I try to avoid um, uh, in relation to fat is the deep frying we are both with my husband we, we do enjoy a deep fried food but I think we are both very aware that this it is unhealthy and healthy way to prepare foods and not because of the fat but more because of the processes that happen during the deep frying so it's some, that's something that we we avoid but just frying a little bit like making some crepes or pancakes in the morning I try not to increase the heat too much rather do it on the low heat and yeah I th sorry I think it's uh, it's that's the way we, we do things and the sugar so I am in a way passionate about this sugar subject because I feel that sugar is so much it's way so too common right now with it's put everywhere and it upsets me like uh, things like ham I mean try to find a ham without some kind of uh, simple sugar like I mean glucose syrup or something like a corn syrup they put really weird things in foods right now and because of that I think yeah it we just get unhealthy because too much sugar it's really really not good so we just plain decided not to add sugar to our foods the replacement that I really like is exilitol that I mentioned a few times on this channel already if you if you saw it it's dangerous for for uh, dogs if you have dogs don't give it xylitol to the dogs but other than that in uh, in moderation xylitol is very healthy and a huge advantage is that it has a very low um, glycemic index which means that it does not spike the glucose in your blood as much as a, as a regular sugar does that's the so if you have a diabetes this is the definitely a go-to sweetener this is very very healthy Compared to, for example, honey or uh, like uh, maple syrup, they are probably very, very close to the, the sugar in that in that matter. Other uh, big advantage of xylitol is it's low in calories, and I really believe that we do not need extra calories in today's diet. We have plenty of calories from other from other sources, and it's always better to get calories from the whole foods and not from sugar. Even from fat, I guess it's better. Yeah, that's just my, you know, my feeling mostly than, than some kind of science-based uh, opinion. And it's also good for teeth. Xylitol is even added to the toothpaste for children. So sh normal sugar is definitely um, uh, making the, the, how to say, car caries? Oh, I don't know how to say it in English. But gives you problems and this destroy your teeth. And xylitol is actually kind of protecting the teeth or kind of, or it's actually protecting the teeth in a way. I don't know exactly how probably by killing the, the bacteria or something. <laughs> Sorry, I should have prepared myself better for these questions, but yeah, it didn't have time. Uh, so yeah, definitely xylitol. And other than that, I, for my family, we don't have any problems with diabetes here. So I always prefer to choose sweeteners that have fiber in them. So for example, fruits like bananas that are extremely sweet, especially if you buy them ripe. So this is for me a healthier, it's, it's still sugar, it's still fructose but I always feel that there's potassium or whatever, magnesium and the fiber, so it gives you many more health benefits than just plain sugar, and it sugars it. Also dried fruits like dates, recently I'm really obsessed with dates, uh, if you saw my uh, gingerbread recipe with dates, I mean, I could eat those cookies every day, but it's probably not unhealthy. But yeah, the definitely dry fruits, bananas, this is the way that I, I try to replace um, the sugar every day, like in pancakes or in waffles. And uh, yeah, xylitol. Otherwise, xylitol is a great thing, but yeah, just be aware that if you're doing, I don't know if some of you are doing like a sourdough uh, a starter, like uh, cakes, then definitely add xylitol in the end because it is... Um, uh, yeast stopping the uh, work of the yeast because it's it somehow antibacterial I guess uh, anti yeast uh, action so just keep that in mind but other than that I think it's a very healthy um, replacement alternative for sugar actually my camera stopped working so I need to repeat uh, a little bit what I just said I did not notice it uh, turned off let's hope it it gets until the end of the questions Okay, so the next category is about food photography and I will read all the questions in bulk so that's uh, quicker to answer. Uh, the questions are, how did you learn to do such great photos? Can you please do a video on how uh, you uh, do your fabulous food photography? A video about video making and what gear do you use? So definitely taking the making the videos is the best absolutely my favorite part of uh, make like working for YouTube working for YouTube uh, making uh, making YouTube I don't know how to say it uh, so yeah so definitely this is my favorite part it's the most exciting the most I feel the most happy when I'm doing that but the truth is I'm really far 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 away uh, from being an expert also thank you very much for for all these uh, flattering messages of course it's very very I was very pleased to read that, that you enjoy that. It's 
also my favorite part of course but yeah I do not have any uh, any professional experience uh, doing uh, photography or definitely videos even less but um, so I learned with with experience it's I checked it specially for this for this video and I started taking pictures in 2000 and 2012 I believe uh, shortly after make some uh, macaroons, macarons, uh, those uh, French pastries that are very difficult to make and it took me a couple of weeks before I mastered and finally succeeded to, to do them and I was so thrilled that I said okay now I have to have a like a um, uh, food blog uh, to share my my success you know to, to show that it's it's possible to do it at home uh, but then yeah my first uh, pictures which I will try maybe insert some of them here they were just I mean it's really scary how it, it's sad how bad they were I'm afraid I will sneeze. No, no, sorry. <laughs> this is this is recording without script, so just you, so just so you know. So my first pictures were really very very sad. I will insert some of them here, so you have an idea what what we are talking about. Uh, my first like a big I think improvement was when I realized that for a beginning photographer, using daylight is a game changer. I mean, you cannot have anything better than a daylight at the beginning. Of course, later when you have enough. Uh, experience and enough money you can invest in some studio lights but I'm definitely not there yet I always use the, the natural light and it's uh, it's amazing how, how how flattering it is for for food I don't know what with other things but for food definitely for food photography there's nothing better in my opinion than than daylight so once I understood that I was okay I, I'm at the better step but it was just through throughout the years because I'm so passionate about uh, taking pictures I guess I was just slowly slowly improving uh, until I started to take, uh, make videos when I started making videos I had a huge jump in uh, improvement of understanding of the the camera because when you take pictures you can just shoot 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 change some setting shoot 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 and in the end you have like let's say 100 pictures which is not too much of an exaggeration in my case and then you choose just the best one like you know aesthetically but with videos it's, you cannot do it because uh, it will just take too long time because let's say video takes three minutes or whatever a few minutes you cannot like you know go through hundreds of these so it's much more convenient just to learn all the settings on the camera and try to smartly use them. I'm now always on the manual setting and I try to adjust all the like exposure time, etc. Just to make sure that this, the first shot is uh, what I want. Sometimes the, um, I call it cadrage. Um, you just uh, framing in a way, just what is in the, in the picture, you know, like sometimes from this side is better, sometimes from the other side is better. And for me, I, I'm not always convinced which side is best, like, or which uh, composition of the picture in the video is the best. So sometimes I take several of these, but for the settings, I usually now, I really hit it correctly. At least I hope, most of the times, I still have the problem with the depth of field. But yeah, I am definitely not an expert on, on that matter. I, I think you understood from my answer already that I feel like a beginner still and more like, you know, getting it from the experience. So making a video about food photography, I probably I don't feel uh, um, competent about that. Maybe one day I could make, if there's enough of interest, of course, maybe I could make a, like a video to show you my video setup. How do I set things? What exactly I'm using, etc. But... Uh, Definitely on Instagram, on Insta stories, I like to share sometimes um, those uh, um, how how did how one picture you know how did I manage to make it? So you can see it from kind of uh, behind the scenes. You can see where the camera is placed. How did I orient the light with a mirror or something? So definitely check out my Instagram. I will put it somewhere here so you can find it easier. And there you can have some kind of behind scenes. Other than that, I can definitely. Uh, share with you which are my favorite YouTube channels that are really absolute masters in my opinion for food photography for video making and I learn like everything from them really so my, my knowledge is either the manual for my camera which is a bit boring or the YouTube videos I don't see there's nothing better than, than this of course plus the practice so definitely this yeah I wanted to here mention this little um, digression little story that I had just uh, a little experience that I just had recently. So I was making this uh, uh, Christmas spice uh, mix video for you this, this year uh, to show how to make this uh, spice mix, obviously. And uh, I remember I thought, oh, I don't need a thumbnail. Thumbnail is this little uh, picture, kind of the cover of the video. So what, what you see before, to, what you click on to watch a video, that's a thumbnail. So it needs to be somehow pleasing and you know, so that you want to click on it. And I thought, oh, I don't need to do that because back in apparently 2013, 
routine I did this um, uh, this recipe for my blog and then I remember I took a picture I was so proud of it was so beautiful and oh and ah and I thought but let me check how it look just to be sure that it's good enough I opened it I was like oh my god that's that I consider good it's so sad I really was like cringy almost how bad it was for for my knowledge now but of course it's absolutely natural to you know you just improve and yeah, even now, I mean, I, I only have YouTube channel since uh, th since this year, since like February. When I watch my first videos, I feel like erasing them. It's literally, it is so bad and so many mistakes and so unnatural that, um, but it's just part of the process. So I try to embrace it, not delete anything. I don't, I hope I will never have this bad idea to delete things because it's a part of the history. So I put here and here the pictures. Um, uh, from 2013 comparing to the 2020 so of course now 2020 i'm very proud of but maybe in three years i'll say huh that's just horrible and you know it this is just uh this is my my uh, my journey with food photography so i don't have any like professional uh, background in that but just through the experience it's, it's a creative process so i really enjoy it That is for this category. Now the personal questions for the few of you that are still here. Congratulations! And again, I'm sorry for being like bubbly and uh, unprepared, but it was it's a difficult time with the lockdown and everything together. But now the personal questions. <clears throat> uh, what was your cooking world tour adventure? Uh, so if I understood this question well, uh, I spent uh, 10 years in France, living in France, so I got a good grasp of the uh, French cuisine, and I absolutely love French cuisine. Then I was also living like for one year in Netherlands, for a couple of months in the in United States. I then spent almost three years in Switzerland, and now since uh, two and a half years I'm in uh, Germany. So in all those locations I feel I had enough time to, to experience a bit, a bit of this uh, local uh, cuisine, so I feel I have enough um, experience or kind of a knowledge to uh, yeah to, to count it like as my culinary experience other than that um, I'm definitely uh, in love with Italian cooking we very often go for little holidays to Italy first of all because it's very very close for us wherever we are it's in Europe so just take a car a little a little uh, trip to Italy and I am each time absolutely amazed how simple but like wholesome in a way and nutritious in a way and comforting uh, the Italian food is. I'm a big, big fan of uh, Italian food and from all the places in the world, uh, I mean economically Italy is probably not the best place to go right now, but other than that, uh, the, the nature, the people, the food, I mean I could live in Italy. I, I feel very Italian in that way. I mean I'm really not Italian, not even close to that, but I always uh, really enjoyed, uh, uh, I have some Italian friends and I I understood uh, we understood each other very well I feel so maybe it's something through food and I also always thought that Italian food is somehow very close to the Polish food there are so many dishes that are called completely differently and they seem to have different origins but they really resemble so maybe it's because of that I really have a like you know soft spot for Italian food speaking of uh, further destinations I love Asia I, I was lucky to visit Sri Lanka for a beautiful uh, a tour uh, around the country, absolutely, I love, love it. Uh, Thailand and a little region around Mumbai in India, so it's, it's, I do acknowledge it's very few, but I absolutely love um, Asian food, um, I love Thai food, yeah, I, I love uh, Asia, so I hope I will be able to travel soon. Now we also have little children, so we were thinking that probably it's not the best, so we rather focus on Greece, uh, Greece uh, to go for holidays or Turkey, both uh, culinarily very, very interesting places. I, I wish I could come back soon again to discover it a little bit more, uh, more less, less as a tourist, more as, you know, habitant, but of course that is very tricky. But again, in the communities like Munich, Munich, you can very easily meet some people from all around, uh, all around the world and whatever cuisine you like, you can just ask questions, you can experience that in that way. But to the, to the point I need to focus a little bit, I feel. Um, yeah, so culinary uh, experience, so I kind of forgot in a way about Poland because I was raised in Poland, so my, my heart is definitely in Poland. And yeah, so that's definitely a big, strong part of my of my culinary experience. My, how did you say it? Um, sorry, sorry, sorry. My cooking world tour adventure. So definitely this cooking world tour adventure starts in Poland. Which brings me to another question. 
um, which is what do you think had a strong influence and a, um, of uh, the great cook you became today? Who or what inspires you the most? So again, thank you for saying that I'm a great cook. And I think I'm actually not a great cook, but uh, I mean, I don't have, uh, again, culinary experience, like a professional from a school or so, but I definitely improve very quickly. So I feel like I am not that bad because I, I mean, I really enjoy learning about that, but I hope one day I will be able to call myself a great cook, you know, but thank you, that's very sweet. And yes, I will have to say that the, really the greatest influence that I, I feel I, I got is was from my grandmas. It might sound a bit like cheesy, but I think it's really, really true. The, my, my earliest memories uh, of the cooking, the things that I'm the most nostalgic about, are this, my, my grandma's cooking. They just, especially the grandma from the side of my father, she somehow had, she, she was so natural in the kitchen, she just made like several meals at the time, like for like a Sunday um, uh, lunches or like uh, family dinners, gatherings. We had a quite a large family on that side and it was just like a, like a po poetry kind of. It was, it, it, there, there were meats, but everything was so tasteful and so well done and she was so natural in that. And I think that somehow it um, it inspires me in a way. So yeah, I guess this uh, I will have to say both of my grandmas definitely. And yeah, here I should probably also mention that one of my grandmas is not with 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 us anymore. So I'm uh, very sad about that. But I had this brilliant idea. I did not know about that. It was so brilliant that when I was pregnant with my son, so like three years ago, I thought, okay, nobody knew that I'm pre pregnant yet, but I thought, okay, we'll go to my grandma and we'll ask her to show me how she does her recipe for donuts, Polish donuts. She always, for like grandma's day, she did those beautiful, amazing donuts with this um, orange glaze. Oh, absolutely amazing. And we did it together. I tried to record that. At the time, I did not did not know how to make movies, but um, yeah, it was a, it was an absolutely beautiful experience. I'm so, so happy that I thought about that before now it's too late, kind of, and now I have this knowledge. I asked her also for some other recipes from her, so I have some recipes, but yeah, there's always this feeling that it is, was not, you know, not enough time that we had, but yeah, so I just, I said that not to just make you sad or anything, but just rather to encourage you that if you have a, a grandma that knows how to cook, really appreciate it and really ask all the questions. I mean, this in case of my grandmas, I mean, you saw on my channel uh, in September, I guess, or in October, I shared with you uh, some recipes from my other grandma that came here to Munich for a couple of days and we just cooked together. We cooked much more than we, what we showed for on the on the YouTube channel and I keep calling her now. Whatever question I have about cooking, which I could in theory Google, I just ask my grandma, just not to, you know, lose this uh, precious knowledge. So I think it's important just to, you know, yeah. Um, I think the grandmas also are happy when we speak to them. Well, this is a bit too emotional, <laughs> but I, th I thought it would be very important to mention. So definitely my grandmas are a huge inspiration for me and I definitely kind of warmly have them in my heart while cooking and I always think about them. So that's important to say for me. <laughs> Next question. Um, which cuisine is closest to your heart uh, slash um, taste buds? So closest to my heart, I kind of answer to that. It's definitely Polish, uh, Polish cooking because I have the most nostalgia, the most, uh, yeah, I'm the most um, like attached to it. It's really in my heart. But if you think, speak about my taste buds, I would have to say probably uh, Asian cuisine. I absolutely love Thai food. I absolutely love Indian food, even though I really need to still learn how to do it myself. I try sometimes but it's it's not there yet. I mean, I start to understand it a little bit. I started to understand the ghee is the key, the garlic and ginger paste is the key, but I still feel I can learn a lot. So I hope uh, while, while I'm still in Munich, where is this huge um, Indian uh, um, community that I will be able to connect with some friends and try to learn better this because I absolutely love it. And now, for example, when there is a lockdown, the restaurants are closed, I'm really starving for, I'm really craving the, the Indian food. Other uh, cuisine from Asian, it's the, um, uh, the Vietnamese cuisine that I just discovered right now. I've never visited Vietnam, so now it's really probably the highest on my, uh, on my bucket list to visit. So I adore Japanese as much as I know uh, Japanese cuisine and everything that is sushi related or miso. Oof, I love it. I just <laughs> really, really enjoy it. And almost the last question so far with me. What is uh, your Mount Everest, a dish that you um, haven't but would like to master? 
if there is one. So the first thought I had when I read this question was croissants, French croissants. I tried to make it like twice in my life, but it was a complete, uh, I don't want to say failure, it was a good, uh, good like, croissant that came out, but it was just not the French croissant, not this layery, crunchy, buttery thing. So that's definitely something I cannot yet visualize how I will get there. I hope one day I will learn how to do it, but for example, with Indian cuisine, I think that it's more at my reach. I can just come to people, try to do it together, understand few few things about Indian cooking, and I'll be there. But with uh, with uh, French croissants, I, I really feel it's like a Mount Everest. I really don't know how I'll get there yet, but I feel I will. <laughs> I'm very motivated, but yeah, I need more time to practice. And uh, why are you a vegetarian? That's another question. So. Unfortunately, in a way, I'm not a vegetarian. I'm not a vegan, I'm not a vegetarian. What you see on my channel are very often the vegan recipes because I do, I really do enjoy it and I do try to get more uh, plant-based um, diet for me and my family. So definitely there, will, there is and there will be more vegan uh, cooking and vegetarian cooking. But yeah, I am not vegan or vegetarian right now. So what you see here is just yeah, part of my diet. I mean, there are some recipes with meat on this channel, but I admit that I th at first I thought I would just mix it up a little bit, but I think now I would really try to focus on this uh, plant-based more. But yeah, there's still cheese. I don't know how to get rid of the cheese. It's really... It's, I mean, so I think um, I would like to be vegan. That there, there are always three reasons. There is uh, the animals, uh, the health, and the environment. So for me, on my on my list, uh, the environment is the highest on the on the list. And also because of that, cheese. Uh, stopping eating cheese is probably higher than stopping eating chicken in a way. So it's it's a difficult journey that I have in front of me, but. Because I'm cooking so much uh, plant-based uh, meals, sometimes you have the whole day that is plant-based, or just like a vegan, I mean. I think that my children, for my children, it will may be easier, you know, in future to say, okay, meat is not essential, or whatever, cheese is not essential, you can have delicious uh, meals without that. And if they decide to go uh, vegan, or because of any reason they will don't, not want to eat um, animal, uh, produce then they can much easier you know just to get rid of their past and just go forward for me and also my husband and we are we are from Poland and Germany when especially the cream cheese eggs is the base of the diet last question which is a bit uh, disconnected but because I decided I'll answer all of those questions I am answering also this um, is your family Catholic so Yes, my, both my family and the, my husband's family is, uh, is very Catholic and additionally now we live in uh, Bavaria which is uh, very Catholic itself. Okay, and the last questions that I got, which are not really questions, kind of not really questions, but uh, made me think that I could maybe answer, ask you some questions. So uh, here I had uh, somebody asked me slow cooker recipes um, and then also more recipes with no sugar. So my, my question to you guys is is there some recipes, is there some um, cooking uh, type of uh, things that you would like to see more on this channel? I'll be very interested which the recipes are your favorite ones, uh, which is uh, what are you looking on this channel kind of for. So if you would write me here in the comment or again on Instagram, I'll be very thankful because like this I have also your your input of what is interesting for you. I always see more likes on certain type of video videos, but I know that leaving a comment on uh, YouTube is, is, is complicated, so I will not be begging you each time, please leave a comment, because I know that you need to log in and you need to find the comment section, and now YouTube changed everything. So Facebook changed everything and YouTube changed everything, so if you're anything like me, you probably also feel lost. But you can always try to comment below and tell me what if you liked or not, and what would you like next? I'll be very... I have my ears wide open for your for your ideas and your propositions. So don't be shy, tell me, I'll be very curious. I have some of ideas of mine, but uh, yeah, I'll be very curious to hear yours too. Okay, so that's the end of this video. I made it under one hour, yay. <laughs> so again, thank you so much for, for, first of all, for watching until the end. It's really impressive for me that you 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 were so strong to listen through all my blah, 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 blah. I hope it was not too quick, uh, my, I was not speaking too quickly, I have a tendency to speak too quick, especially if I don't have script, I just, my head is thinking too quickly and, and the words just fly out. And yeah, thank you again for all the questions and I wish you a very, very happy new year. I hope uh, we will get some lots of cool cooking here on the channel and that we get to interact uh, and exchange ideas and, and recipes, yeah. So thank you very much for watching and see you next week. Bye!